Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel, Living in Charlotte, NC. NC stands for North Carolina, obviously. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a tour and actually talk about the pros and cons of a suburb just to the south of Charlotte called Fort Mill, South Carolina, just across the North Carolina, South Carolina border. So if you're coming to visit, you're just curious about it, you're coming to live here, you're gonna wanna pay attention to this video as we jump into the pros and cons of Fort Mill, so stick around. Silva with Longtad Realty, brokered by EXP Realty right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. If this is your first time to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you're gonna be the first to get notified when we put out new videos, which we try to do twice a week, about the Charlotte market, the market in general around Charlotte, not specifically Charlotte. We're gonna talk about neighborhoods, we're gonna talk about things to do, people to see, places to go, and of course, like today, we're talking about a suburb of Charlotte. Listen, we get text messages all the time, we get DMs, we get emails, we get Zoom calls, which are, I love to do the Zoom calls, from folks just like you thinking about coming here, again, whether it's to visit or to move here, and we wanna to talk to you, answer your questions, and talk to you all about the region. So please go ahead, get in the comment section, send us something if you're so inclined. Down in the description down below, you can go ahead and click on a link and it'll connect you with a Zoom call. And you can determine whether it's 30 minutes, 60 minutes, any day of the week, any time, just go ahead and get on there and you'll be talking to me face to face. And again, like we say, like we like to say, whether it's 10 days, 10 weeks, or 10 months, if you're moving here or coming here, it's never too early to start that conversation. And like I said, we're gonna talk about the five pros and the five cons about living and moving into the Fort Mill, South Carolina area. So if you have any questions, again, put them in the comment section. If you haven't seen my video that I did a couple months ago on Fort Mill, we'll stick it right up here or maybe over here. Check that out later on. So let's jump right in here and first talk about what makes Fort Mill such a great, great community. And number one on the list for me and for a lot of people, especially those that are moving here, especially those with kids, is the school system. So in South Carolina, Fort Mill is always ranked number one, number two, right up there in the top among all the schools in South Carolina, which puts it up there in the upper rankings of all the schools in the Charlotte region for quality. Go ahead and check out niche.com or greatschools.org for a, a more detailed rating on the school system here in Fort Mill. And you've got Nations Fort High School, you've got Fort Mill High School, a lot of great schools that are highly thought of among everybody around here. Now, because the number of students has really drastically increased by about 7,000 in the last decade, Fort Mill has had to build a number of new schools. And of course, they're nice and pretty. They have quality athletic facilities, quality academic facilities, and people just love the schools here. So you're gonna get a quality education with some of the great schools in the Fort Mill area. All right, pro number two is the employment situation. With all the growth here, obviously people are coming for jobs, but people that are coming here seem to be looking at those professional positions and bring with them that professional background. Some of the great companies that are based out of Fort Mill, South Carolina are the following. LPL Financial, which has a 27 acre compound over near Kingsley. You've got Black & Decker, you've got Movement Mortgage in the top five, you've got Lash. Fort Mill Schools also hires a great amount of teachers and those people that help run a school. So Fort Mill Schools is a big employer of the area. Two more great companies around here are Scheffler, hope I said that right, Scheffler, Schaeffler, and Red Ventures. If you're concerned and you've looked at the job market in Fort Mill and you have a concern about that, then Charlotte is just eight to 15 miles up the highway. And Charlotte has got the home to nine Fortune 500 companies like Nucor, Lowe's Home Improvements, Bank of America, Duke Power, several others, obviously there's nine, so there's gonna be several others. But uh, that's just right up the highway, anywhere from eight to 15 miles. And a lot of people you're gonna see getting in their cars, jumping on 77 or Route 21, heading up into Charlotte to work. But again, Fort Mill does have a great employment base. Next up, number three, and this is one of my favorites, is the walkability of Fort Mill. And if you look at a map, you're just looking at a map, you're gonna see Fort Mill's cut up by Route 77 going north and south. There's 21, there's 160, a bunch of roads zigzagging through Fort Mill, and you might think, well, where do you walk? Well, there's three really good neighborhoods that are very, very walkable. One is Baxter over on the west side of 77. Then you got Kingsley Town Center on the east side of 77. And then downtown, the 
the old section, the downtown section of Fort Mill itself is very walkable. Now each of these walkable sections of Fort Mill is very distinct. They've each got their own commercial opportunities. They've got some retail, some residential, a lot of residential in some of them. They've got multifamily. So we're gonna talk about Baxter first, which is I think the cozier of the three in my opinion. And Baxter's got their own YMCA, they've got a Starbucks, they've got a lot of businesses up and down the main street of Baxter Village. And then they've got multiple sections of Baxter for housing. And they've got condos, townhomes, million dollar homes, some homes more affordable, but a lot of single family residential, a lot of greenery, it's nice and tree-lined. You're gonna find just people all over Baxter Village walking around just about any day of the week. So that's Baxter. When you head over to Kingsley Town Center, that's a little bit different. That's more of the open. It's not what I would say is cozy. You've got some nice restaurants with outdoor seating sitting there overlooking a pond. And from that pond, you can see LPL Financial, which I just mentioned. You've got, again, residential townhomes and you've got all sorts of small shops. So that's Kingsley. And then if you head further east, of course, there's downtown or the old town section of Fort Mill, which is really that that quaint section of that quaint section you're looking for when you say oh i want to go to an old town and walk around you've got shops on both sides of the road you've got restaurants on both sides of the main street you can walk down to walter elijah park which i'll mention later on but that's very nearby the downtown section there's some restaurants that are well known like the improbable the improbable pig well known and hobos, you've got all sorts of places to, to grab a beer. Um, the print shop is my favorite, just a little stroll down the street. And I know I just said the improbable pig, but I was thinking that's not it, it's the improper pig. So that's a great name for a restaurant anyway. The improper pig, gotta go there. Okay, for you outdoor enthusiasts, topic number four is parks and recreation. Lots and lots of that stuff around Fort Mill. And the number one place in my mind is Ann Springs Close Greenway about 2,100 acres, just in between the, the Old Town section and Kingsley, Fort Mill, but it's 2,100 acres of trails. There, they have a lot of trail runs out there, hiking, walking, equestrian activities. You see horses just roaming around in some, behind some fences. You've got educational opportunities out there. People just come to enjoy nature out at uh, Ann Springs Close Greenway. One of the things that's particularly nice to me or for me is that the Rock Hill Striders, that's a running club down in Rock Hill, just south of Fort Mill, they host races out at Ann Springs all the time. Anywhere from 5K, I think their shortest race might be a 5K or 4.2 miler, up to a 50K, 31 miler, which I just did in January. So they've got races out there all the time, very comfortable, no pressure, just get out there and run around. You're running on the trails, it could be muddy, could be wet, but it's fun. Again, you're gonna find all sorts of school groups, families, individuals, clubs, getting out there for that serenity now feeling at Ann Springs Close. Another example of comparing cozy to open is Walter Elijah Park is being the open park where Ann Springs is the, is the cozy closed park. But Walter Elijah Park is a great place. It's got amphitheater, it's got some walkways, it's a lot of green, a lot of open field. It's very walkable from town and there's kids all over the place all the time out there. And of course, they've got official playgrounds as well out there, Walter Elijah Park, meaning, you know, with swings and all that good stuff. But um, both of these locations have events going on all the time where you can just bring your family, your friends, or come alone and enjoy, like I said, enjoy nature. Okay, before we jump into the fifth row on our list, I wanna let you know we changed venues, of course. You can you can see that because I'm no longer outside. We've got something going on down in the south and it's all over the country right now. Two groups of cicadas have decided to pop out of the, the earth at the same time, and they are extremely noisy here in the Charlotte Market, Fort Mill, that area. I know down in Charleston, where my daughter lives now, she's not hearing much of them at all where she lives. But I want to move inside because they were getting pretty crazy, and I don't know if uh, you could have heard them in the background or not, but I could hear them as I was talking. So anyway, on to the fifth pro on this list, and it's very subjective. It's the community feel. So Fort Mill maintains a very tight-knit community vibe with frequent local festivals, markets, community events, um, all that sort of thing that really allow the residents to truly connect and feel at home. So one of the annual events that uh, should be coming up, I think, maybe uh, in October, it being hosted on multiple weekends in October, and it's called Weekends on Main, where they go ahead and they shut down Main Street in the old downtown section of Fort Mill, 
and they shut down that street and the local merchants can go and set up their shopping and dining offerings right outside of the street and it's pretty cool and relaxing a little while ago i told my wife hey we're going to go out there and do that um, in october so look we'll stick it on our calendars where we see it on the agenda anyway now if you need a bigger crowd or maybe a little bit more of a rowdy crowd you can always just head up to carowinds amusement park and that's just on the north side of Fort Bell. And I believe Carowinds, part of it's on North Carolina side, part of it's on the South Carolina side of the border. So it's right just a little bit north. But that place is hopping all year round and they go all out during the Halloween season and they name it Scarewinds. And then lastly, for something to do that it'll give you a community feel, Obviously, you've got Lake Wiley just to the north and northwest. Some of it might be to the southwest of Fort Mill. And you can go to one of the marinas, rent one of those big pontoon boats. It's about, I think, it's $550 a day to get an 8 or 10-person pontoon boat. Get out there on the water and just enjoy with your neighbors or family friends. Now, if you are enjoying this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button for more content like this. And share with friends who might be thinking of either moving to Fort Mill, moving to Charlotte, and making this their new home, or even just coming for a visit. Also, click on the link in the description down below to schedule a Zoom call if you want to get into a conversation and discuss your potential move to this, uh, this awesome area. All right now let's balance the scales a little bit and talk about some of the reasons why Fort Mill might not be everyone's cup of tea. And please remember these are basically my version of the pros and cons, my uh, particular version. So some of you may think, boy, those are five things that I didn't like any of them, or those are five things that he thought were the negatives, and I liked all of them. So here we go with some of the cons. Now, again, like I just said, we're going to jump into the cons. We've got five of them, but there are many more things that I like about this area than I dislike. And I've lived all over the country. I spent some time in the service out of college. My dad was in the service. So I'm an army brat. We lived in and out of the country. I've got to experience a lot of places, but I just love the Charlotte market. My heart a lot of times says New Hampshire is my favorite place, but I just love Charlotte. So anyway, a little bit more about the area that is fantastic besides the weather and today is an awesome day minus the cicadas it's the proximity to the ocean and major lakes as well as the mountains you've got three hours east of the ocean two three hours west to the mountains and lakes are within 30 40 minute drive of um, fort mill or even charlotte and you've got access to major routes of transportation 77 and 85 split right through charlotte charlotte douglas international airport can take you anywhere in the world and then there's endless opportunities of things to do right nearby fort mill so just love the area but we're moving on to some negatives so if you are from fort mill or you have visited let me know what your thoughts are about some of the things that you like or dislike in the comments section. Thanks. And then number one con, the cost of living in Fort Mill. Not drastic, but it's still there. So while Fort Mill offers many amenities, it's worth noting that the cost of living here is just a little bit higher than the national average. And that's largely due to the population and proximity of Charlotte. And since we're talking about Charlotte, I guess on the plus side, the average price of a home in Fort Mill is currently $538,000, and that's in May of 2024, which is up 10.7% compared to May last year. And the average price in the city of Charlotte is $562,000, which is up 12.6%. So you can see that we're a little bit lower down in the Fort Mill area than Charlotte. And of course, that'll change every month. That's a, a large market up in Charlotte, much smaller market down in Fort Mill. Um, if you want more housing details about the market here, DM me, make a comment about specifically what you're looking for. Or uh, like I said before, a couple times, get on a Zoom call, we talked face to face. Next up is the dreaded traffic congestion. And again, this is all relative. If you live outside of Cincinnati or Washington, D.C. or Boston or some of those major cities, and, and I've been to all those, that's horrendous. Traffic is relative to depending on where you come from. But as with many growing suburbs, traffic can be a downside. And in Fort Mill, I think it is a little bit of a downside. We need the roadway to catch up to the traffic or just figure out a way to regulate it a little bit more. So the commute into Charlotte during peak hours can be very lengthy. So it's something to consider if you're if you're looking at working in the city of Charlotte and living down in Fort Bell. Of course, if you have flexibility in the hours you work, then you can certainly time the traffic and make it just about anywhere you want to go without the high stress of high volume traffic. So that's nice if you can time it. A lot of people though, if you're eight to five, then you're just gonna hit that congestion. I think we're definitely a rush hour type of cities, type of area. So 
during rush hour, it's going to be crazy. But most other times, the, the traffic is, is pretty mild, I think. Now, the third con may really hit some people hard or it may be a pro to others. And that's the limited nightlife in Fort Mill. So for those seeking a vibrant nightlife, Fort Mill may fall just a little bit short. You know, if you're like my kids that are that 23 to 25 year old age group, you know, they want to be where things are hopping and hopping late in the evening. So there are certainly things to do after dark, but nothing like the options you're gonna find up in Uptown Charlotte, Noda, or South End. And this town is certainly quieter in the evenings with fewer bars and fewer late night activities compared to Charlotte. We would expect that, and that's what you get. Next, we're gonna talk about property taxes, and we're just gonna briefly cover this because again, it's it's all relative on how drastic it is. But South Carolina is generally generally has a higher property tax compared to some of the other states, and Fort Mill is no exception. This could be a deterrent for some of those potential homeowners. So make sure you're talking to your realtor, to your lender, to your accountant, to everybody that's involved in your finances, your family members, to determine whether Fort Mill is going to be the right place. Or maybe, if not, look on the north side of the border in North Carolina, and there's a little bit of a tax difference there. So go ahead and do your comparisons and talk to the experts. So lastly, on the list of cons, and that's rapid growth. And that's probably very similar to any place that is a suburb of a growing city. You've got rapid growth of the area. And while it's beneficial in many ways, it's also led to some growing pains, like the infrastructure of the of Fort Mill, the city, the police, the fire department, the emergency services, including crowded schools. And development can sometimes feel overwhelming. You've got trucks moving in and out all the time. So that rapid growth has been painful sometimes, and I would put that down as a as a con. I don't think anybody really enjoys being part of it. So there's a con. And with some of the luxury developments that we're seeing and the current inflationary economy that's come with increases in home pricing, as well as everything else. And again, Fort Mill just hasn't been able to escape that. All right. So there you have it. A look at the pros and cons of living in Fort Mill, South Carolina on our channel, living in Charlotte NC. Whether the charming town squares, the excellent schools, the job opportunities call to you, or the cons give you pause. It's all about finding the right fit for your lifestyle. So let your realtor get involved. Like I said, let your lender get involved in that, tell you what price point works. Come visit. And if you're going to come visit, please go ahead and let us know. We'd love to tour you around, love to fill you in on information prior to you getting here to know what to look at. And again, bottom line is thanks for watching and make sure to check out our other videos that we have on some of the other suburbs around the area, some of the neighborhoods, and all those kind of give you an indication of how awesome this place is to live around the Charlotte market. So thanks a lot. See you next time.